Hello students, how are you all? Today we are going to learn human health and disease part 2. In this we are going to learn about bacterial diseases. Bacterial diseases. Before learning this one, what are the bacterial diseases? We will revise once what we learned in the previous class. We we'll learn about the health. What is health? Health is defined as well-being physically, socially and mentally. And what are the factors which are influencing the health? Genetic disorders, infections and lifestyle. And we discuss about uh, disease and the types of disease, congenital and acquired disease. And acquired disease is of two types. Infectious or communicable diseases, non-infectious or non-communicable diseases. Infectious diseases or communicable diseases it will spread from person to person example is AIDS non-infectious or non-communicable diseases which do not spread from person to person example is cancer and we learn about the disease causative agent which is known as pathogen pathogen may be bacteria may be virus may be fungus may be parasite may be helminthus etc etc and etc and what the pathogen will do, once it will enter into the host, it will interfere with the metabolism of the body and starts affecting the functioning of the body systems. Right? This is what we discussed in the previous class. Today we are going to discuss about bacterial diseases. What our first bacterial diseases is typhoid. Typhoid. Typhoid also known as typhoid also known as enteric fever typhoid also known as enteric fever right? and what is the causative agent for typhoid is causative agent means what the agent which is going to cause this disease as you know what the disease causative agent is pathogen as you already told it may be bacteria it may be virus it may be uh, protozoa, it may be fungus, it may be anything. So we are discussing here bacterial diseases. Then definitely the causative agent is going to be the pathogen is going to be the bacteria. What is that bacteria name is Salmonella typhi. It is very important one. You should have to know it. Salmonella typhi. Very very important one. Salmonella typhi. It is the causative agent. How this salmonella, salmonella typhi is entering into your body? How that should be definitely some way by which it will enter into, your, into our body? What is the way? How it will spread means? How it will spread means? It will spread through contaminated food and water. Contaminated food and water. If the food is contaminated or water is contaminated, in this contaminated food or what we are eating, what we are eating, if in case salmonella typhi is present in that contaminated food or what we are drinking, in that one, if salmonella typhi is present in that contaminated water, then if we eat or if we drink that food and water, then the salmonella Typhi will enter into our body. It will enter into our body through the contaminated food and water. Now we will come to know how it is entering into our body. Once it enters into our body, what it will do? What is the work of the pathogen? Here the pathogen is bacteria. What it will do? It will try to interfere with the metabolism of our body and it will start affecting the functioning of the body system. There is a diagnosis test is there. For typhoid, what is the diagnosis test is Vidal test. Vidal test. It's a, it is important. Note this one. Vidal test. What is diagnosis test? Diagnosis test is a test which will exactly say what the illness you are suffering from. So, if in the diagnosis test, if the reports comes as positive, then you have typhoid. If the report says you are negative, then you are not suffering from typhoid. Right. So what's the test? 
which in case if anyone having typhoid if in case anyone having typhoid then we will suggest them to do this viral test if viral test report comes positive then he is having a typhoid otherwise he is not having a typhoid he is just having a fever right so to confirm whether this illness exactly is correct or not we are diagnosing that one through the test known as viral test right and what are the symptoms of typhoid we are going to learn that one what are the symptoms symptoms typhoid symptoms what are the symptoms as you know typhoid so what will be the first symptom high fever will be there high fever will be there there will be abdominal pain in typhoid there will be abdominal pain in typhoid also the one of the symptom is loss of appetite loss of appetite as i told already in the first class what is loss of appetite students loss of appetite means the hungriness will decrease the hungriness will decrease that is what known as loss of appetite if your hungriness is decreasing that symptom is indicating loss of appetite so it is one of the symptom of typhoid loss of appetite constipation constipation and one more symptom is one more symptom is constipation wait a minute students yes high fever abdominal pain loss of appetite uh, constipation and uh, another symptom last one is intestinal yes intestinal perforation intestinal perforation so what is this intestinal perforation we will see first before that i have to say one more thing about the incubation period incubation period what is incubation period students incubation period is the period between period between the period between the entering of germ the entering of pathogen germ i am saying it as pathogen period between the entering of pathogen into our body into our body and the appearance of the first symptom of that and the appearance of the of the students of the first symptom so what is incubation period means once the pathogen enters into our body it will multiply it will replicate by getting the nutrients from the host and what it will do it will after some time the appear the symptom will be appear between that time once it enters into the body until the symptom appears that period in between period is known as incubation period right what is the incubation period for the typhoid is nearly 10 to 14 days in some books they have given 8 to 14 days but actually averagely you can take it as 10 to 14 days or if you not treated typhoid what will happen this bacteria salmonella typhi which is going to infect it will perforate the intestine what is perforation means it will make holes perforation means making holes the salmonella typhi start making holes in the intestine and it will be fatal intestinal perforation is fatal so rarely very rarely very very rarely typhoid leads to death in untreated cases if it is treated it will be cured so what we learn in typhoid students typhoid causative agent is salmonella typhi it is very important one how it will be spread through contaminated food and water and we also studied what is the diagnosis test <coughs> viral test 
and also we studied these symptoms. What are the symptoms? High fever will be there, abdominal pain will be there, constipation will be there, loss of appetite will be there. If not treated, intestinal perforation will be takes place, which is so fatal. And we studied about the incubation period, the period between which were um, the period in which the pathogen enter into a body and shows the first symptom in the body between the between the time in which it is replicating that particular period is known as incubation period and it is 10 to 14 days right so second one second bacterial diseases what is our second bacterial disease students pneumonia there are so many interesting facts are there about pneumonia Pneumonia. Second one, pneumonia. What is a causative agent? It is going to cause pneumonia AS. Causative agent, I am representing as CEA students. What is the causative agent which is going to cause pneumonia AS? Streptococcus pneumoniae. Streptococcus pneumoniae. A uh, haemophilus influenza also will cause pneumonia. Haemophilus influenza will also cause pneumonia. Haemophilus influenza. Yes, it's a causative agent. How it will be spread? It will spread through droplet infection. How it will spread? How it will be spread, students? It will spread through droplet infection. If any patient or if any person is suffering from pneumonia, if someone is in direct contact with them, then while speaking, the particles which is spitting out from their mouth, the droplet which is spitting out from their mouth, if anyone is in contact with them, then that person will also be suffer from pneumonia. Once this, once the droplet reaches them and enters into their host that means and enters into their body because the person which is going to be infected that person is one in one as host right how it will spread students it will spread through droplet infection <coughs> what is the incubation period students for pneumonia pneumonia is not just only caused by bacteria it will also cause by virus nowadays covid 19 is going on in this COVID-19, uh, somebody is getting pneumonia disease also. So it will also cause due to virus. So the incubation period will be varies according to the pathogen which is entering into the body and which is causing the pneumonia. Here for streptococcus pneumonia, here the, for the streptococcus pneumonia, what the incubation period is, incubation period is, incubation period is 1 to 3 days. And it will be varies according to the pathogen which is entering into the body, right? So it will spread through droplet infection. And what are the symptoms? What are the symptoms? Are you able to see this one? Right? No. Wait. I will rub it down and I will write the symptoms. See students, what are the symptoms? Fever will be there. Mostly in our cases, fever will be the common one. Fever will be there. And there will be respiratory disorders. Respiratory disorders. Why this respiratory disorders is arising? Because the alveoli is going to be filled with fluids, the alveoli is filled with fluids, the alveoli is filled with fluids. Once the alveoli is filled with fluids, that person will suffer from respiratory disorders. Once they suffer from respiratory disorders and the alveoli is filled with fluids, once the alveoli is filled with fluids they will not be able to transport the oxygen 
the oxygen level decreases due to what will happen means the lips and the nails becomes bluish in color becomes bluish in color the lips and the nails becomes bluish in color and it is an indication that you are suffering from pneumonia once the lips and the nails becomes bluish in color it is an indication that you are suffering from pneumonia right and you may also have chill chillness will be there right these are the symptoms for the pneumonia and we complete pneumonia now we are going to study about bubonic plague bubonic plague bubonic plague also known as students black death right we will discuss about it bubonic plague see third one is bubonic plague What is the causative agent for bubonic plague is Yersinia pestis. Yersinia pestis. <coughs> Actually, I am not well today, students. Okay, let it be one point. So, causative agent Yersinia pestis. In olden days, it is known as Pasteurella pestis. Pasteurella pestis. In olden days. Actually, Yersinia pestis will affect the rodents. Actually, the Yersinia pestis affects the rodents. It is a disease of rodents. It is a disease of. It is a disease of rodents. But you can see humans are also uh, getting bubonic plague. Yersinia pestis is also affecting the human. How? Actually, it is a disease of rodents. How we are getting this one? How we are getting affected with this bacteria? How? Means, there is a Xenopsella. It is a rat flea. Xenopsella. It is a rat flea. Xenopsella is a rat flea. It is an ectoparasite. What is a parasite, students? A parasite is an organism. Which requires host for the nutrients for the survival. That is what known as parasites. Ectoparasites means what is ectoparasites? The parasites, the parasite which live on the external surface of the host, which live on the external surface of the host, external surface of the Host, right? So see, there is a Xenopsilla which is known as rat flea. Rat flea means it will be present on the rat. It will present on the external surface of the surface of the host. Here the host is rat. It will it is it will be present on the surface of the rat, as it is an ecto ecto parasite. It will suck the blood of the rat. It will suck the blood of the rat. So, Yersinia pestis affecting the rodents. What is actually rodents means? Rodents means these are the small animals which have a, a sharp front teeth. They are known as rodents. What is the example of rodents? Means you can take a rat, a rat, mice, rabbit, etc. Okay. So. If any rodents is affected with this disease, if any rodents, I'm rubbing this one, students. I'm rubbing this one. I'm rubbing this one. If any rodents, I'm also rubbing this one. I think you would have noted down already. If any rodents, if rodents affected with Yersinia pestis, if rodents affected with Yersinia pestis, and this Xenopsilla is present on the surface of this rodent, this affected rodent. Example, I am taking here rat. Example, I am taking here rat. So, this Xenopsilla is present on the surface of the rat. This rat is 
this rat is acting as a host for this parasite for this xenopsella so it will what it will do it will suck the blood but this rodent this rat is already affected with yersinia pestis it will pick up the blood it will suck the blood which is having yersinia pestis if in case this rat dies this rat dies now this xenopsella requires another host for the nutrients for the survival as it is a parasite then what it will do unfortunately if there is no rat there it will go and bite the humans it will go and bite the humans once it bite the humans the yersinia pestis will be transmitted into the humans once it is transmitted to the humans that means once it is transmitted to the humans it will start to replicate inside the body of the humans the person to whom this xenopsila bites that person will suffer from bubonic plague as yersinia pestis enters into the body right so uh, once the xenopsila bite the humans that human in that human yersinia pestis yersinia pestis will be transmitted into the body once it is transmitted into the body yersinia pestis multiplies multiplies and causes bubonic plague and causes bubonic plague it is how the bubonic plague is caused once again students if there is any rodent which is affected with yersinia pestis the rodent is suffering from bubonic plague and bubonic plague means the causative agent is what yersinia pestis this xenopsila is present on the surface of the host here the host is rat and it is affected with bubonic plague and the agent which is present inside the rat is yersinia pestis what this xenopsila did is xenopsila sucked the blood in which yersinia pestis is present which is the causative agent for the disease known as bubonic plague once this once this rodent dies this rat dies this xenopsila will have to survive for that it will what it will do it is a parasite it should require another host it will go and bite the human once it bites the human yersinia pestis will be transmitted into the body once it is transmitted into the body yersinia pestis is the causative agent for the disease bubonic plague then that person to whom this xenopsila bites so so it is how the bubonic plague comes in the uh, comes into the picture in humans actually yersinia pestis will affect the rodents but due to the parasite xenopsila humans are also getting a disease bubonic plague due to the causative agent yersinia pestis and it is the parasite which is going to transmit this disease or which is which is going to transmit the causative agent for the disease actually it is going to transmit it is going to transmit the causative agent for a disease bubonic plague known as yersinia pestis right this is about the bubonic plague this is how the bubonic plague will happens in humans okay what we study we study about what is the causative agent and what is the uh, how it will be spread and now we are going to discuss about diagnosis what is the diagnosis test what is the diagnosis test diagnosis test is basen stain test basen stain test if this test becomes positive then you are suffering from bubonic plague if this test becomes negative then you are not suffering from bubonic plague and bubonic plague another name is black death i is i written or not i don't know so you just copy this one bubonic plague also known as black death this is the diagnosis test and what are the symptoms what are the symptoms 
first symptom is painful bugo, painful bugus in armpit in armpit or groin region or groin region what is groin region students it is a region near the pelvic region near our sex organs the groin region is present what will happen actually bubos means lump it will swell up lump up. painful bubos in armpit or groin region armpit you know here it is the armpit that will be swelling happens then will be lump which is known as bubos and it will be painful it is a symptom for the bubonic plague for the bubonic plague and one more symptom is there will be rashes there will be rashes in your body there will be rashes in your body which will turns into black color wait a minute rashes in your body which turns into black color which turns into black color and leads to death and leads to death right painful bubos in armpit or groin region there will be rashes which will turn into black color and leads to death and one more symptom is internal bleedings internal bleeding will happen and organ failure these are the three symptoms of bubonic plague or black death right these are the three symptoms then, then what is the diagnosis once again we will revise this one what's a diagnosis test wilson stain test if this test becomes positive then you are suffering from the bacterial disease known as bubonic plague also known as black death and bubonic plague also known as black death i already told what are the symptoms painful bubos in armpit or groin region and there will be rashes there will be rashes in your body which will turn black after upon a certain time and it will lead to death and third symptom is internal bleedings and organ failure it will happen in bubonic plague it is a very fatal it's a very fatal disease students now uh, it is not eradicated completely till now per annum i think seven members are affected people are go exposed to this disease sound members are getting exposed to this disease known as bubonic plague but it is not completely eradicated but in olden days it nearly affected and it nearly kills more than a million people so many million people died because of this disease it is an epidemic it is a pandemic it is also one of the pandemic like covid 19 right it is also one of the pandemic now we are going to learn tuberculosis fourth one is tuberculosis 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 also known as tuberculosis also known as coach disease coach disease why it is known as coach disease means it is studied by robert coach tuberculosis is studied by robert coach that's why we are calling a tuberculosis as coach disease right robert coach okay what is a causative agent for tuberculosis what's a causative agent for tuberculosis is mycobacterium tuberculosis mycobacterium tuberculosis is a causative agent for tuberculosis what it will do how it how it will how it will affect the body this bacteria how it will affect the body mycobacterium tuberculosis will secrete a toxin mycobacterium tuberculosis secrete a toxin known as tuberculin known as tuberculin known as tuberculin 
what this tumor clean will do means it will damage the tissue it will damage us the tissue what the tuber clean will do it will damage the tissue and it will cause this mycobacterium tuberculosis will cause or infects cause or infects lungs lymph nodes even it also infects bones and joints it also infects bones and joints so this mycobacterium tuberculosis will secrete a toxin which is known as tuberculin tuberculin damages the tissue and mycobacterium tuberculosis infects lungs lymph nodes bones and also joints if mycobacterium tuberculosis infects i'm writing here students may you not supposed to see this one i'm writing here mycobacterium if mycobacterium tuberculosis infects lungs wait yes infects lungs then it is known as pulmonary tuberculosis pulmonary tb pulmonary tb pulmonary tuberculosis okay if this mycobacterium tuberculosis infects lungs then it is known as pulmonary tuberculosis then we studied about causative agent how it will spread it is also spread through droplet infection how i am writing here students how the tuberculosis will spread means it will also spread through droplet infection if anybody is having tuberculosis if there is any nearby if anyone is in direct contact with them or using any utensils of that person who is suffering from tuberculosis then it might be possible that the person who is in direct contact or using the utensils utensils of those patients they become infected with this disease known as tuberculosis right spread through droplet infection okay i'm rubbing this one now we are going to study symptoms what are the symptoms what are the symptoms symptoms first one is severe cough will be there severe cough will be there second symptom is sputum with blood sputum with blood what sputum with what is sputum students sputum means what we are splitting which is coming from the lower airway the mucus which is coming from the lower or lower airway lower airway through which we are coughing up the sputum is a mucus sputum is a mucus which is coming from the lower airway through while we are coughing up we are, while we are coughing right the sputum I, it is blood right oh spilling let's wait, wait a minute sputum with blood loss of appetite will be there students loss of appetite will be there fever will be there in tuberculosis fever will be there loss of appetite as you know the hungriness decreases fever loss of appetite is there weak uh, rapid weak pulse rapid weak pulse it's also one of the symptom sweating at night at night sweating will take sweating occurs sweating at night okay these are the symptoms students what are the symptoms severe cough sputum with blood Mm, sputum with blood one more i think i missed students one more i think i missed excessive fatigue is there excessive fatigue what is fatigue students a feeling of tiredness is known as fatigue feeling of tiredness 
So these are the symptoms of tuberculosis or coach disease. What are those symptoms? Severe cough will be there. And maybe it occurs sputum with blood. What the mucus you were secreting due to cough. What you are spreading due to cough. That sputum along with the blood will come out. Third one is loss of appetite. Your hungriness may decrease. Fourth one is fever. I already told you. In most of the diseases we will see the fever. As one of the symptoms. And rapid weak pulse. Sweating at night. At night sweating will occur. And excessive fatigue. Fatigue means feeling of tiredness. So today we learn four types of bacterial diseases. And tomorrow we will learn another four types of bacterial diseases. Right? I am dividing the bacterial diseases into two parts. Today we discuss the part one of the bacterial diseases. Four parts. And tomorrow we will discuss about the uh, another four parts of the bacterial diseases. So today's lecture is enough. Try to read it by tomorrow. It will be helpful for you. And try to solve MCQs for NEET and JE students. And I just covered the most important things which is required for NEET. And which is required by the 12th standards. And which is given in the book. Almost I think covered everything. So have a good day. And do good. Bye.